You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is another discussion that I had with Brett Vinot of School Sucks podcast, um, and we did this at Porkfest. It's part of the live School Sucks podcast recording that was done at Porkfest. And in this episode, we continue our discussion of what they don't teach you at school about entrepreneurship and why. Unfortunately, the audio quality is a little bit choppy, but it is still listenable. So I hope you enjoy the discussion, and thank you so much for listening. I, I want to get right to, uh, to our next guest, even though you're going to get to hear him uh, for the first time very soon on School Sucks Podcast in the podcast feed. His name is Jake DeSillis. Jake, how are you doing? Very well, thanks. I'm so glad that you're back. Jake's podcast is The Voluntary Life, and um, you joined me on stage like I was talking about um, in my presentation a couple of days ago. But we wanted to continue our discussion talking about uh, the absence of an entrepreneurial education in public school all over the world, I assume. I assume it's the same, it's the same where you came from, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things that you were touching on uh, yesterday that I thought was really important, and I think we should uh, expand on that here, and I'd be interested in hearing Osborne's feedback as well, is that young people don't need to feel like they can't do anything just because they're stuck in these schools and you were saying the sooner you can try this stuff out the more security that you can have when you try this stuff out the better right like start young yeah definitely in terms of getting into entrepreneurship absolutely especially because you know this is like the the thing that is totally um absent from the school system i mean I was thinking about it and um, um, all the things that you need to know uh, in order to, to do your own business, how to sell, uh, how to manage cash flow, um, you know, uh, all of the types of uh, skills that you need for entrepreneurship is the opposite to what you get in school. So I think the sooner you can actually get on and, and uh, try it for yourself, the better. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, when did you when did you first realize, Osborne, that you wanted to like you you didn't want to be somebody else's employee? Do you remember that feeling? Or that? Man, I don't, I don't know. It just seems like something I've always thought. Yeah. Although, although I mean, I originally wanted to uh, be a professor, right? Which is is the closest thing to not having a real job, uh, that, but still is working for someone else, right? It still is like it. It's appears appears to others that you are employed right if you are a professor right you might work something like seven eight hours a week you could make hundreds of thousands of dollars that way right right yeah right. and uh, get the whole summer off and all that good other good stuff every seventh year get to take off and do what you want <laughs> but then i realized i had to deal with the students and uh, not so fun the kids who were pumped out of the high right. schools sure right. So, uh, but I think this is, and Jake, you'd probably agree that this is how we naturally feel. Like we want to do things that, you know, give us satisfaction, like a personal sense of satisfaction. We don't exist for the purpose of pleasing other people, you know? So did you, was there a point for you guys in your education where you lost that and you said, and, and like you had to recover from, you had to get back what you felt when you were a little kid? Like, oh, I want to do things that excite me, that interest me. Uh, do you remember that? Do you remember how it started? Well, I was just going to say, actually, what, um, from what Osborne was saying about you know being a professor and the way that that, that sort of lifestyle goes, I think that's actually why you don't uh, get any sort of insight into entrepreneurship at school or in college because teachers um, are part of a system which, I mean, you don't have to have any of those skills to be a teacher. And that's why they're not really able to impart those skills because you don't really have to know anything about selling because you're not. You're not, you're not in the free market and you don't really know have to anything about you don't know, have to know about cash flow because because you know you have a, a fairly secure job if you're a professor or whatever you have tenure so you know that those that's why this I think those skills are totally missing um, I, I spent a long time in in college and I did a uh, 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 postgraduate uh, uh, degree as well for me I just got bored um, I mean I, I was really interested in stuff that I was studying and I was reading and I was always really interested in learning but I actually found that I was learning a lot more outside of you know the, of this sort of formal uh, education system so I, I got into ownership quite late um, in my late 20s 
And that's one reason I think it's a really good idea, if you can, to, to start earlier. Because uh, the sooner you can start, you know, the more opportunity you have to try things out. Yeah, that sounds a lot like your story, too, Osborne. Sure. So I'm, I'm curious about this. How do you teach entrepreneurship? Because I, you know, I, being an Austrian economist, uh, we, you know, we've got Israel Kirzner's theory of entrepreneurship that is really nothing that can be taught. It's just a, a spark of inspiration that occurs in some people's brains uh, on uh, around how to mix particular capital and labor to solve particular uh, problems of providing goods and services in the marketplace. I think the the thing the way that you can learn about entrepreneurship is by being around people who are actually doing it, and actually you know talking to people who um, who are running businesses. Um, so you know if you're in school or whatever, you can be exposed to people who are doing that. That's that's really the the best way to learn because then you can get exposure to people who are actually actually uh, practicing it. Uh, and the other way of doing it is, that it's, of course, to just try, just set up a business yourself. So I would think that, you know, public school or even in the university system, those are two of the worst places you could be as far as, like, the people who surround you and the people who are bending themselves as authorities and, and potential mentors. Um, um, not that they're certain, certainly not that they're all bad people, and some of them could even be entrepreneurs on the side, you know, but by and large, those are people who have... Um, a dr like a dream level of job security, you know, like can't be fired and, um, uh, you know, really, really don't even in, in many ways exist in the economy, you know, just because there's there's no uh, variables that uh, really can affect them. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine I, I can't imagine that. I just think that all of those like so many stressors that normal. Uh, you know, middle class people have just absolutely removed. And it doesn't mean that, that um, there haven't been situations in the last couple of years. I mean, I want to be fair, like a lot of these public school teachers were very concerned about what was going on in Wisconsin. They, you know, deals had been made with them and they um, got a taste of what I think it's like for most people in, you know, for lack of a better description, the free market uh, to uh, comp to have to think they might have to compromise, like losing benefits. I talked to a teacher in Concord who said, I I'm here to save my health care. I have three kids. You know, this is an agreement that, that this is what they told me I would get if I did this, you know. And I, I feel bad for those, uh, the, you know, those people as well, as well. But for the most part, they don't, uh, they don't exist in the economy that so many of uh, the rest of us do. So. Yeah, which means that if you're in school, you're just never going to get exposed to, you know, to those kinds of, of um sort of problems. You're not going to be talking to people who are actually dealing with uh, questions of like, how am I going to sell this new product that I'm developing and you know, how am I going to manage my cash flow? So I think that's really the way to do it is to meet people who are actually uh, doing entrepreneurship themselves and just try it out. Right. Absolutely. I don't know. It, it seems to me like uh, the school system, like any other prison, is a perfect place to practice your entrepreneurial skills, right? Because you have all of these vast inefficiencies and uh, and problems that are just sitting there waiting to be solved. I mean, kids aren't even allowed to have you know diet soda in the in the schools anymore. Schools anymore. So someone's got to figure out how to get those things inside there. I mean, not to mention all the other uh, substances that that find their ways. Didn't onto you? Campuses. Weren't you a young businessman in school? I, I had a bit of an organized crime ring when I was. <laughs> In second grade, but um, I don't like to talk about that. Providing substances that were available in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you certainly, I mean, the more, the more prohibition there is, obviously, in these schools, and there's plenty of it, and they're finding new things to prohibit all the time, the more room there is for uh, black markets to develop within the school. Sure. Any more productive things, like uh, you know, particular topics that, like, that the folks might want to learn that aren't being taught in the classrooms. You know, there's ways of forming clubs and uh, other kinds of associations to get those uh, other things done, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So you have to work outside the system, even though you're stuck in the system. Uh, this has been School Stuff Live. Jake, you want to plug your stuff real quick for us? It's thevoluntarylife.com. It's the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for really classing up our show and getting us back on track here. I look forward to working with you in the future, and um, I'm glad to see you at Porkfest. We're going off LRN, but we are going to continue, and you will hear this in the podcast feed, uh, the after show. Usually that's bonus content, but we still have plenty. I see at least three faces out there that I want to put in this third chair. So we will continue. I'm going to take about a five-minute break, and then we'll be back. This is School Sucks Live from Porkfest.
Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.